Now for question number seven from the specimen paper for the P3 uh, paper, International A level. Um, here we have a equation which we have to differentiate. It's y equals y equals e to the power of two root three times x. X is not in the root. Cosine times cosine of two x between the limits of zero and pi is okay, where this is valid for. So we've got this um, equation, which we have to find dy dx, we have to differentiate it. Now this is a clear case of what's called the product rule. We have a product of two different functions, which we have to um, differentiate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a product rule. And the product rule starts off like u equals u times v. Okay, so one of them you call u, I'll call the first one u. It doesn't really matter which one you do. Call u and v, that's e to the power of 2 root 3 times x. And v, I'm going to call cosine 2x. And to, to use the product rule, first thing I have to do is differentiate each of these um, separately. So if I differentiate e to the power of something, it remains as e to the power of the same thing. But if that something has a function inside it, which it does, this is 2 root 3 times x, I have to differentiate that and multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So the differential of e to the power of something is itself. But then I multiply by 2 times root 3, because the difference of 2 root 3x is 2 root 3. It's just a constant there, multiplied by the x. So it's 2 root 3 times e to the power of 2 root 3x. And my v dash, which means the differential of v with respect to x. Well, if I differentiate cosine of something, I'm going to get minus sine of the same thing. So minus sine of 2x. And again, if there's a function inside the function, I must multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. And the differential of 2x is 2. So I've got to multiply this by 2. So you get minus 2 sine 2x. Now, when I use the product rule, okay, I'm going to find now dy dx. What I'm going to do is, uh, I always like to just um, write it down exactly in this way. My u first and my u dash underneath it, my v next to the u and my v dash underneath it. Then instead of memorizing a formula, I just know I, I need to multiply this by this and add this multiplied by that. So I always start with this and then I do the second. It doesn't matter which way you do it with the product rule. Okay. Um, and in fact, most of the books have it the other way around. But I like to do it this way because the quotient rule is also the same way. The quotient rule is when you have a quotient of two different um, functions. And, but you have to use the same formula as we use now, except that you subtract between them and it's always this v times u dash minus u times v dash so i like to do the same way for the product rule so i just you know i'm used to doing the same thing so instead of memorizing the formula i know i've got to do cosine 2x times 2 root 3e to the power of 2 root 3x so i'm going to multiply this by that when i multiply those two together i'm going to get 2 root 3e to the power of 2 root 3x times cosine 2x and I'm going to add and I'm going to multiply these two together now because I'm multiplying these two together I'm going to get a negative term because it's a positive times a negative so I'll change this plus to a minus because of that that's going to be net minus I'm going to have 2 times e to the power of 2 root 3x times sine of 2x and there we have we have differentiated this function okay so that's the differential of this function and it says hence using algebra uh, and showing you're working find the exact coordinates of the stationary points of the curve okay so now we have to find the stationary points of this curve uh, by using algebra now because it says hence of course it means using what you've just done now the stationary points we know the stationary points are when dy dx or the, the gradient is equal to zero. Okay, it's so turning points, whatever, or <coughs> points of inflection. But basically, the stationary points are when dy dx equals zero. So we've got to equate this, what we found, to zero. So we have 2 times root 3 e to the power of 2 root 3 x times cosine 2 x minus 2 e to the power of 2 root 3 x times sine 2x equals 0. So I've got to solve this equation. And what we can do here is we can basically take out the common factor, which is 2. Uh, it's just 2, not root 3. It's just 2, isn't it? Put that smaller. So you've got 2 and e 
to the power of 2 root 3x is common. So what we're left in this term is root 3 times cosine of 2x minus sine of 2x is equal to 0. So now we can solve using the product, the zero product property. I know either 2 e to the power of 2 root 3x is equal to 0 or root 3 cosine 2x minus sine 2x equals 0. Now this has no solution because e to the power of something will never equal 0. Neither will 2 times e to the power of something okay, will ever equal 0 because there will always the x-axis here is the asymptote, so we'll never reach it, okay? This is just like a vertical and horizontal stretches of it, so it won't affect the fact that the asymptote will still be zero, so it'll never reach zero, so there'll be no solutions to this part. Over here, what we can do is, and this is one of those cases, we have the cosine of an angle and the sine of the same angle, okay, equals a zero, they're added together or subtracted, so it's very simple to solve this. If we divide everything by cosine 2x, we'll get rid of one of the ratios and we'll cause this ratio to become the tangent of 2x. If we divide this by cosine 2x as well, it becomes 0, won't it? So you're left with root 3 minus tan x equals 0. So we can say tan x is equal to root 3. Okay, now, if you remember, we have to solve this for the limits of 0 to pi. Okay, so we got tan x is equal to the square root of 3, solved between 0 and, not tan x, sorry about that, big mistake here, about to lose some solutions there, aren't we? It's tan of 2x, be very careful about that. It's the tan of 2x, tan of 2x, and the tan of 2x. So it's between 0 and pi. So here we've got 0, and we have to, because this is tan of 2x, this has to become 2x here. And that becomes therefore 2 pi. So we've got to catch all the angles between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so what we can say is 2x is equal to inverse tan of root 3. Now, that means 2x is equal to, now our calculator will give us pi over 3, I think, for this answer. Let me just get the calculator. Okay, so we have inverse tan root 3. Make sure I'm in radian mode. I am. That's going to give me pi over 3. So 2x is equal to pi over 3. Okay, but because I have to go all the way to 2 pi, okay, I have to catch the other solutions. So if you think about quadrants, this is pi over 3. And we can see the tangent is positive in the first and the third quadrant. So we need, also, we need to find this angle as well. So this is going to be pi plus pi over 3. So pi plus pi over 3 is like 4 pi is like 3 pi over 3 plus pi over 3 which is 4 pi over 3 so those are the two solutions for 2 pi 2x so therefore we can say x is equal to pi over 6 and if you divide 4 pi over 6 by 2 you're going to get 2 pi over 3 so those are the x coordinates of our ants of our points but it's asking us to find the x and y coordinates find the exact coordinates okay so i have to now find the y coordinates so i need to take my original equation which i will take by coming i'll just put it on the other page while you're waiting okay so now we have the x values of the points of the stationary points so when x is equal to pi over six we need to find the y coordinates so y is equal to e to the power of two times root three times pi over 6 times cosine of 2 times pi over 6 let me write it in a better way 2 times pi over 6 okay so that will give you e to the power of that will give you root 3 times pi over 3 because the 2 and the 6 will cancel times the cosine of pi over 3 which equals, now the cosine of pi over 3, I think it's a half. Let's just confirm that. The cosine of the answer equals a half. That's right. So you're going to end up with your answer as e to the power of root 
3 times x over 3 divided by 2 times a half that will be divided by 2 so that one of the coordinates is pi over 6 and e to the power of root 3 x over 3 okay or we can say x root 3 over 3 the x is not part of the square root okay over 2 okay so that's one coordinate and the other coordinate is when x was equal to 2 pi over 3 so y is equal to e to the power of 2 root 3 times 2 pi over 3 times the cosine of 2 times 2 pi over 3 and that gives you y equals e to the power that will be 4 times root 3 uh, pi that's supposed to say a pi there sorry not x it's a pi silly me got to be very careful and make silly mistakes like that that's supposed to say pi of course not x my pi my pi became an x Okay, so even there, that's supposed to say a pi there. Root 3 times pi over 3. And same thing here, that's a pi. 4 times root 3 pi over 3 times the cosine of, that's 4 pi over 3. So that should give you negative a half. Well, I'm pretty sure that's negative a half because that's in the third quadrant. So the cosine of 4 pi over 3 is going to give you minus a half. Yes. So you'll end up here with y equals. You can have negative e to the power of 4 root 3 pi over 3 divided by 2. So my other coordinate was going to be 2 pi over 3 times a 2 and that's the x coordinate and the y coordinate will be minus e to the power of 4 root 3 pi over 3 divided by 2. So those are the two answers, the stationary points. That's one of them here and that's the other one down here. Okay. So there we are with that question. Okay, you've got to be very careful about these fiddly little roots and x's and pi's and stuff, but there we have the answer.